So guess what? It's time again for me to edit your raw photos. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, which I'm really happy about. More about them later and why I love them so much. And um, yeah, basically this concept is that you submit your favorite raw files to me and I do my best to edit them in Lightroom according to my taste. And uh, you guys submitted photos the last time I asked you, like a couple of months ago. And today I finally found the time to sit down and look through them. And I'm gonna edit some of them in this video. And if you want to be in my next I Edit Your Raw Photos video, uh, please just use the form that I have linked below in the video description and submit your photos there. And I will pick from them next time I do such a video. So yeah, let's dive into it. Okay, so we have uh, a couple of moths, I think, here. A very nice shot of them. They are caught in the act, it seems. And um, this photo looks a bit overexposed. So I'm gonna first see if I can um, address that, maybe. Hmm. I don't want to use the tone curve here, because I, I just see immediately that I kind of destroy the photo a bit or maybe I will use it but in combination with decreasing the exposure let's try that okay it looks pretty all right but I still want to keep a bit more of the shades here so whoopsie let's let's do just like this okay already a little bit better uh, let's lift the shadows a bit so we can see more of the eyes. Moth eyes are very often very dark, but now we can see a little bit of them at least. Uh, let's play around with the white balance. Something like that maybe. And uh, no, that wasn't good. Maybe let's try the picker. This is better, I think. And uh, I want to make the photo a bit more symmetrical. Even though I like this kind of uh, grass here, um, but let's try something like this. Is this good? I think we need to cut a bit more from the top here to make it look symmetrical. The key is of course that you want to have the same distance towards the bottom and top uh, from the main subject and also to the left and the right. Uh, and it's not always that the correct distance is the, like, the mathematical distance. Sometimes different elements in the picture make it look better even if the distances aren't like mathematically the same. So you always have to use your own judgment and your own eye basically to judge what is best for a photo. Okay, uh, still though, like it feels like a bit overblown. Let's try to change the colors a bit. Oh, this is nice. Adding some more orange there. A bit more saturation. Let's see what we can do about the greens. Something like that maybe. Uh... <laughs> uh, sorry, this makes me uh, laugh a bit because uh, if you want to make a photo look very amateur, like you're an absolute beginner in photography, there's no easier and better way than to do this. This just, <laughs> it looks so bad, so amateurish. And whenever I see this, I think, okay, this is someone who really is a beginner in photography, wants to make a cool effect and discover that you can do this with one of the colors to make the subject pop out in a color. But no, it doesn't really work. I'm sorry. Don't do that unless you want to come off as a complete beginner and amateur in photography. Um, let's see if we can maybe increase, no, this wasn't a good idea. Let's keep the contrast. Let's just bring down the exposure a bit. Now I think it looks pretty natural and pretty good. Lifting the shadows a bit more. And let's try to increase the overall saturation. No, it didn't really hold up for that. Maybe the vibrance, maybe like that. Okay, uh, let's add a slight vignette, uh, but maybe a light one this time, like that. And um, yeah, I think I'm happy. I think this is a, a, maybe as good as I can make this photo. Uh, or maybe, yeah, I'm gonna bring down the blacks a slight bit. 
and uh, bring down the hide as late. Maybe like that. Okay, I think this is a is probably as good as I can make this photo. Let's do a quick before and after check. Yeah, looks better, I think. I have a very nice fly photo here. And the uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the tone curve. You can see here that the curve um, is extremely low, like close to zero here. So we can um, do like this pretty safely to um, make the photo a bit more punchy and bring out more colors. And um, next I want to take a look at this green hue. I'm not really liking it to 100%. I would like to um, see what... Yeah, I like it more like this. Uh, maybe not like too much in this direction because then it just looks unnatural, but a little bit. Like this. I like that. And when it comes to the cropping, I think it is pretty nice as it is. I like this big leaf here that has this nice like spiral shape and uh, I like that there is some room here as well. But let's experiment a bit. Let's see for example what happens if we do like this. Does it make the photo nicer or not? No, I think it actually was nicer before. I think I will not touch uh, the cropping that much. I think uh, possibly like this. I think it's good now. So let's look at this fly. Now it is pretty like monochrome almost. Um, I'm thinking if maybe we can do something about it. Uh, we're gonna first try lifting the whites a bit to make it a bit more punchy. Uh, and then decrease the highlights so that the highlights on the leaf aren't as strong. I'm um, gonna try something I'm not usually doing that often, uh, make like a radial filter here on just the fly itself and uh, see if we can uh, lift the whites just for the fly like this to make it even more contrasty and also lift the shadows a little bit and uh, let's see if we lift the saturation, no that doesn't look that good, let's leave it as it is. I think this fly, fly looks pretty good in uh, like not that much color, not that strong color. And uh, we have a little bit of sensor dust here. That's uh, even though uh, Lightroom's <laughs> clone or healing tool is really, really bad for whatever reason. I'm gonna do try a little bit. I mean, this is a pretty easy one or should be. We have some here as well. It's very like uh, sublime, but yeah, why not try to take it away? And yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this photo. Let's let's move on. Here we have a nice little ladybug, and uh, let's see what we can do about that one. It's not perfectly sharp, but uh, it is sharp enough, I would say. And uh, we have some sensor spots here, gonna take care of them in a moment. But first I wanna see what we can do if we put the white balance picker here. Okay, didn't make a difference. Maybe <laughs> try here. No, okay, then I guess the white balance is pretty good. And uh, then I'm gonna see what happens if we uh, increase the saturation a bit. Yeah, it looks cooler, right? We don't want to take it too far, but a little bit. Didn't kill anyone. <laughs> and uh, I have a feeling that we should maybe try lifting the shadows a bit here. No, they were pretty good where they were. Here we see that uh, the tone curve ends around here. So let's try to do like this to lift the photo a little bit. So what about the crop and the framing in this photo? I think it is pretty good. I don't have any big issues with it. I like when we have some context here and we can see that it sits on a leaf. I like the very blurred out background. I think the next thing I want to try with this photo is to see 
Mm, what happens if we adjust the hue of the green background? Mm, I don't want to take it too far in this direction because it looks very unnatural. But maybe a little bit like that. And uh, let's play around with the saturation. Bring, bring it down a little bit. Yeah, let's not touch the luminance. Okay, I'm thinking starting to look good. I'm gonna see if I can uh, do some quick work here on the sensor dust. I mean, this is a really common problem when you're doing uh, macro photography since you're often shooting at uh, oh, whoopsie, <laughs> small apertures. And sensor dust is uh, more visible the smaller the aperture. And uh, on top of that, the numerical aperture, uh, which is like a physical term, is extra small when you're doing high magnification macro photography. Uh, not sure though how that affects the sensor dust, but I have a hunch that it uh, strengthens it even more. If we have any physicists watching, uh, please leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> on that, if you know how that works. Uh, yeah. So now it is cleaner. Let's see, we have a couple of spots more here that we can take care of. I probably missed some as well. But now I am pretty happy about this photo. Um, yeah, as you all know, I really love vignettes. So let's see. Yeah, let's add a... a discrete vignette here. I think that's good. So let's um, compare uh, before and after. Not a huge difference but I think um, I mean this is how I like to do editing. Not any huge changes or any photoshopping or anything like that. Just some touching up to make a good photo even better. Okay let's move on. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, which is my favorite place to build a website. And I mean, even though I have a background in web development and web design, I still prefer to use Squarespace because it is so easy and quick and you don't have to do any work yourself. Basically just spend a few minutes. I mean, I spent 30 minutes building my portfolio website and I got it to look exactly as I want my portfolio website to look. With minimal hassle, it's so easy to use and I can really from the bottom of my heart recommend you to look at Squarespace if you want a great tool to build your portfolio website or any kind of website basically. Uh, go try it for free and uh, when you discover just how great it is, use my code Michael Wydell for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you Squarespace! Here we have very nice photo, very interesting colors and uh, I'm not gonna dare to guess the species here, <laughs> I'm just gonna say it's a nice photo. Uh, I'm not really that good at naming insects unfortunately. Uh, we can see here uh, directly in the tone curve that uh, we can probably do like this to lift it a bit. and. Uh, Oops, we can see here that it's a very sharp, very nice photo. Uh, so let's see uh, how we can um, bring out the most of it. So I really love how this leaf here sticks up like this uh, and how the background is nicely blurred out. Um, so I will definitely keep this, but when it comes to the framing, I'm thinking maybe we don't need this left part here. I often think it's nice to try to have the same distance towards this side uh, as to this side uh, from the main subject. Uh, for me it kind of balances the photo in a nice way. And also like from the bottom legs here to the bottom of the frame and from the right leg to the right of the frame. Trying to keep that distance the same everywhere I think that makes for a pretty good look. And. Uh, this part here is a little bit dark. Let's try to lift the shadows and see if we can make it a little bit brighter. Good. Now we also got more detail here. Whoa. <laughs> Hello. Uh, and as always, let's see what we can do with the greens. Maybe this looks a bit better. Uh, I think so. 
And also the blues, they are really deep and nice here. Let's see what happens if we play around a bit. I mean, I don't want to make it look too unnatural or like too far from how it looks in reality, but I'm always up for making a photo look more aesthetically pleasing. Something like that, maybe. What if we bring up saturation? Maybe these are the blues that we should... Oh, this was nice. I like how it got some more like ocean-like highlights here. I like that. And now I'm thinking that maybe the greens are a bit too strong. What if we decrease the saturation a bit on them? Okay, not too much. Maybe like that. Okay, what if we try to increase the overall saturation of the picture? No, okay. I think it was pretty good as it was. We can lift the vibrance a slight bit. All right. I think we are getting close to uh, the best I can do with this photo. Uh, <laughs> as always, I, I'm too tempted not to try a little bit of a vignette. But in this case, no, I, don't, I, don't, I think it makes it worse. Let's keep it without a vignette. Let's say we're happy here. A quick before and after. Uh, yeah, I think I did some kind of improvement, uh, even though just a slight one. All right, let's move on. Oh, this was a very nice weevil shot. I love, I love how the light comes in from the left here, uh, and it looks like natural light. And despite that, it is a really nice exposure. Looks good. Uh, but it suffers from very dark shadows. So I think I'm gonna start by looking into that. Can we make it better? If we look at the tone curve here, we see that we can push it a bit to the left like this. And uh, now the highlights got a bit overblown. So let's see, we can balance that like this. And even maybe decrease the whites a bit. And let's look into the shadows. Can we lift them without destroying the photo? Doesn't seem possible to lift them that much. They are really very dark. Um, so I think we will have to live with that. Um, when it comes to the framing, I am thinking that perhaps we can play around with it a bit. What happens if we do this? Hmm, this is hard. I mean, I don't want to remove too much of this flower in the background. I think it's a nice touch. Maybe like this. I think this made the photo maybe a bit better, a bit more balanced. What happens if we cut up some, cut off some from the bottom? Because I want to crop in a bit, because I want to put more focus on the weevil. Uh, it, it was a bit too small, I think, in the original framing. Maybe something like this. Um, let's play around with the bite balance. Can often lead to interesting things. But in this case, I think it was pretty good as it was. Let's see what we can do with saturation. No. Uh, let's see if we can adjust some of the main colors in this photo to make it prettier. Begin with the yellow. Hmm. <laughs> this actually looks pretty cool, but I'm not sure I want to destroy... Like, now we don't even see that there is a flower there. And now it's far too orange. I think it was pretty good as it was. Maybe a little bit more to the yellow side like this. Let's look at the greens. I want to move them a bit to the right, and yeah, I think the saturation was good as it was. Make them a bit brighter, like this. And I think the overall exposure we could possibly increase a bit. Maybe like that. Yeah. I think I'm pretty happy with this photo now. I think I will leave it like this. Just a quick before and after. Yeah, I think I did a small improvement. I'm happy with that edit. 
let's move on. Here we have a cute little jumping spider and uh, I like how this like whatever it is that is out of focus is it some kind of web or is it just specular highlights or whatever. I like this pattern. I love the spider and it's very sharp but it suffers from some low contrast. So let's see what we can do about that. I think this photo has a great potential. That is my, my hunch. We have some sensor dust spots here. I think I will actually begin with addressing them. Um, we'll just take the, the bigger ones first. Whoops. That's okay for now. Um, so the contrast very low and we can see here from the tone curve that we can probably move it like this and okay maybe not too much like that. And let's see what we can do with the contrast slider. Maybe something like that. The hard thing with bringing out contrast from a low contrast image is that you very often lose color tones and shadings and stuff like that. So you have to be really, really careful uh, whenever you do something like that. Of course, the best thing is to try to get a good contrast already in the camera. That's always the easiest and <laughs> best way. Um, highlights are a bit overblown. Let's see if we can do something. can take them down a bit. And uh, I'm gonna try now for fun to do like an adjustment just of the spider itself and uh, see if we can target it for, for example, higher contrast. I think it works pretty okay. Oops. I don't wanna bring up the white too much because then we get this overblown sections again. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's play, play, let's play around with the white balance a bit. Oh, I, no, it was good as it was. It <laughs> becomes much too yellow or much too blue when I try to uh, change it. So what about the framing? I already kind of like the framing, how it is, but it is always um, like you have nothing to lose by playing around a bit and just experimenting and exploring what it could be. I want, I really want to keep these parts. Um, what if we do like this? I think this is better because now there is a bit more focus on the spider. And I also think I want to kind of do like that. And I'm thinking maybe I want to kind of make it more diagonal like this. I think this creates a little bit more like feeling of action in the photo, like this guy is walking around. Uh, maybe now it's a bit too tight. Like that. Yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, let's look at um, vignette. Okay, let's just have a very slight one like that. And feels like we should be able to do something more with the colors. Um, even though I'm not sure I want to increase the saturation overall. Um, gonna Play with the individual colors. Let's start with the yellow here. I think it looks better when it's more to the orange side. Uh, or actually, if we just decrease the saturation, I think that actually made the whole photo a bit better. Then we have some kind of pinkish tones here. Let's see if we can address them. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, they were a little bit hard to <laughs> for me to catch. Okay, I'm like it feels like I should be able to do some more to this photo. Maybe I can try to drop the blacks a bit. Slightly. Overall exposure increase a bit, maybe like that. Okay. I think this is probably as good as I can make it. Um, let's try this again. All right. I think I will have to be happy with this. Let's see before and after. Yeah, some kind of improvement, I guess. Um, yeah. Let's move on to the next photo. Oh, I love this one. It looks like a cuckoo wasp. It's a very nice exposure, very nice framing, and yeah, the whole flower and everything. Really nice photo. By the way, I am linking all the, the photographers that took these photos in the sections below if you want to visit their Instagram or like check out who they are. I'm doing this for everyone who submitted their details and want me to share them. So have a look at these great photographers that contributed to this video. So, okay. I mean, this picture is already pretty good. I'm not sure what to do actually. Um, I think I will start by trying to decrease the highlights here a bit, so we see in more detail. And uh, I'm gonna pre play a little bit with the bite balance, maybe even do uh, something like uh, this. Now oh, that's too blue. That is pretty good, I think. And let's lift the shadows and see what we can find there. We can see uh, nice green tones, let's keep them. And um, what if we lift the whites a bit? Okay, not too... No, I don't want to touch them because I don't want to overblow this too much again. Mm, there. Okay. Colors. What can we do with the colors? The green, I think I definitely want to do something with. <laughs> As always, it seems like at least according to my taste, you get nicer greens in your macro photos if you just drag this hue slider a little bit more to the ocean blue side. And uh, what about the pink tones? Make them maybe a little bit more to the purple side. I think that's good. And what about the crop? I'm not sure here. I mean, I don't want to take too much of the flower away because I think that's one of the nice things with this photo that uh, it sits in a flower. But just for the just for the sake of trying, what happens if we do like this? No, I think this was taking away a bit too much. Like this. I think this was pretty good. I think in general, when you um, try to decide how to frame your shot, I think it's a good idea to um, have more space to the front of the subject than to the back. This is something I learned from like bird photographers. Um, for some reason that makes the photo feel more harmonic and like pleasant to, to look at. I'm not sure the exact science behind that, but so I often have like a tendency to try to crop away from the back so that we have more space in the front. But this was too much. I think this is maybe the sweet spot. Okay, overall saturation, do we want to increase it? I uh, don't want to make it unnatural, but just a tad like that. Okay, I think perhaps this is the best I can do with this photo. Let's see before and after. Yes, I think I did um, a slight improvement, so I'm happy. 
let's move on to the next photo. So here we have another very nice cuckoo wasp photo. And uh, I really love this photo. Uh, it reminds me of one of my favorite photos, which is also of a cuckoo wasp. Uh, I like how uh, when you have a very short depth of field, uh, you can see uh, these parts here that make this very nice like specular highlights that makes up for kind of bokeh. Uh, I love the look of that. So let's see what we can do with this photo. First of all, I think it is uh, needs to be a bit brighter. And we can see here on the tone curve that we can uh, easily do something like this to lift it a bit. And also I want to lift the shadows a bit so that we can maybe see more detail in the eyes. Yes. Oh, now we can really start appreciating how nice this photo is. Wow, the scales or whatever you you could call that. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, these wasps are actually pretty hard to photograph in my experience. They are very skittish. They don't want to stay around when you photograph them, at least according to my experience. So it can be frustrating to try to capture them. I want to try to see what happens if I cut in a bit from the left here. Yeah, I think this is an improvement because it becomes more, you get more focus on the actual subject. And I think this is actually a photo where we actually can benefit from some vignetting. Let's try that. Yes, a slight bit at least. And let's try to lift the whole exposure. Yes, but now I need to drag down the highlights a bit. And I wonder how much more saturation we can tolerate without this photo looking weird. Okay, not much more. <laughs> I think it's actually good where it is. Maybe a little bit more vibrance like that. And um, I think the colors are so perfect, so beautiful, so nice. So I don't even want to try touching that. I think I'm gonna just say that now I'm happy with this photo. And I think the background is also very nice, very harmonic and nice pattern and yeah, just a very nice photo. Probably my favorite so far from the ones I'm editing today. This is a really cool photo and I think it has a lot of potential, some kind of fly here. And uh, yeah, to begin with it is of course uh, too dark. already a lot better. I love the contrast of the eyes uh, and the sharpness of them towards the rest of everything. The sensor dust spots here are a bit distracting so I'm gonna begin by taking them away. Oops. How can I drag around without... Okay, let's do it like this. There is one more. All right, a lot better. And uh, this is a really cool shot. I'm not sure I want to like do too much to the eyes. I love how they are so punchy, but I'm gonna lift the shadows a little bit so you can kind of get a feel that there is more detail there. And gonna see for fun what happens if I rotate it so it becomes like more like this and then crop in a bit so we have a more symmetrical shot. Uh, hmm, this is not really like maybe like this. I think this makes the photo a bit even a bit nicer because we have more uh, symmetry. Um, I'm gonna have to crop in a bit more from the top to make it even more symmetric and it's still not really Maybe like this uh, I want to make it slightly brighter and also I want to uh, Yeah, it's even cooler with some more saturation I'm gonna play around with the colors a slight bit 
Um, maybe something like that. No, I don't want to go like overboard on this one. It is a really good picture as it is. But it, this one I think could maybe benefit from some vignetting. Let's try that. Yeah, let's, let's have a slight one like that. I think this is nice. So I think this is maybe um, what I can do with this photo. And uh, yeah, really cool photo, really cool shot. Uh, love it. And yeah, this is my slight modification of it. Let's move on to the next photo. All right. Here we have a very cute jumping spider, but also very underexposed. Let's see what we can do. Tone curve, like that. Uh, now we see more. I love this photo, by the way. I love that the leaves are here as a nice background, backdrop. Um, still though, I think I'm gonna cut away a bit of them uh, to make it... For some reason, I think many jumping spider shots uh, do really well as like squares. Um, not sure why, but maybe because they are a bit squarish in their own shape often. The greens don't look that nice. Let's see what we can do about them. Something like that, maybe. And uh, the spider itself can maybe... Can we do something about the color there? Hmm. <laughs> didn't seem possible to do that much of a change. Uh, let's see if we can bring out more detail here. It looks a bit overblown. I'm decreasing the highlights a bit. Uh, maybe on the whites. And uh, bring up the shadows to get a bit more green here. But not too much because I saw now that the uh, contrast in the actual spider got lost a bit. And uh, something like that, maybe. White balance was good as it was. Some texture. Try a vignette, maybe. Just a slight. Oh, okay. No, that will actually destroy it. I like this part of the photo. And I'm actually not sure about the framing. Maybe, maybe something like this is better. This is nice, I think. And... Um, bring in white balance a little tad to the yellow side. Hmm. Bringing up the shadows a little bit more. And we have a sensor dust spot here. Let's remove that one. And now I think I am pretty happy with this shot. Yeah. I like it now. So quick before and after check. Even though the framing before is not here for whatever reason. If you know how to get that, please comment below. Yeah. I made it brighter, it looks better, <laughs> I think I'm happy with it. That's it for this video, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe, I post new videos very often with a focus on macro photography every week. Yeah, thank you for watching, over and out, bye!